between these two squads. Vitality on the CT side as big will be a tease for this one. And you also just feel like so many of us have been on the big hype train in the past and been let down over and over and over yeah. again. So the hesitation is a little bit there, but this does feel like it's kind of the dawn of a new day for this lineup. It's going to be the case right now. They're starting on the T side of Mirage and on the CT side. Vitality are ready and waiting. Cyber's going to let go of one bullet. Just a warning, fair warning for anyone showing up in the middle. And it looks like it's going to be a crunch to the A-bomb site right away, Jackie. Walking their way in through the connector with the ramp man as well. Seeing if you can find much to work with, but you've got to get past Sphinx, who could always be a big old fawn in your side, currently sat in the sandwich. Audio cues confirmed. Ooh, fast flick onto the second as well. Denies the plant and keeps them in check into the free versus free. It's a pretty decent start. Got to find a bomb plant sooner or later. The smoke is going to be fading, and actually Krimbo, he steps into the smoke to take the fight with Cyborg, and we're able to bring him down as well. Apex will drop to Keto and Dupree. He was on a very, very long flank, and that is way too late for that kind of interaction. So I don't even know if he really wants to go for this. It feels like it's just not going to happen, right? He's so far away. If there is a kit, it's lost somewhere at the back of the side, I think. So he's just going to save it up, save the armor if he can, and it'll be big to pick up the pistol round. Yeah, throw in the towel for that one. So, pistol round prowess already being displayed. And Keto, the man to keep your eye on there, punishing with a P250. And if big, already find themselves a pistol. I think that's good for the momentum. The way I've kind of been building my storyline for this team as well is that they really need to feed the hot hand. In my mind, that's hyped and Keto, Fab as well at times. You've got to build them up in the early rounds, right? Because then they really start to steamroll. Yes, and maybe especially true for somebody like Hyped when it comes to the AWP. I mean, yeah. the, the, the confidence you need to take some fights, that confidence is probably going to have to be even more impressive when you're fighting Cyber on the other side. You just know that every single time you step in with oh, the scope yeah. out, you could be you could be dead in a in a millisecond. So this, though, is pretty impressive. And I mean, in spite of Sphinx doing the best that he could in that corner, he just gets overwhelmed. Defense not quite ready for it. And Cyber actually doesn't really do much of anything in that round. So yeah, good start. And Apex for the classic emotes, oh, which yeah. we do love. Very animated reactions from Apex. They always draw me in. It's one of the best parts about watching this team, to be, to be perfectly honest. But not the only part. They have some pretty banging players on this side, too. Magus has been playing pretty well, uh, mm. from what I can tell. So uh, I, I don't think I've casted any of Vitality or the, uh, the armor yet, so... Happy to be uh, to be picking up a game here to, to get a little bit of a closer look at them. Get him under the microscope and see what's moving. Zaiwu already swinging into position. Wanted to see if he could catch a timing with a scout to open things up, but no one going to give him a freebie. What's your take on the sky scout? Is it just a single scout, or would you do you want more than one scout in a round like this? I've always preferred the double scout with right. deagles to support, yeah. and then kind of send the deagles in, get the tag, and then rely on the scouters at the end, right? I like that too. Just it just obviously I just like the scout in general, but it just it, when you get the tags in mm. early on in the round, those deagles can really come into a little bit of a world of their own. Good little pop flash coming out. Smoke from all the way out of the hallways to block out the market. And because the Apex has already fallen away at the start of the round, they're just going to save this into the next one. There's no point in going for a retake here. So kind of a an uneventful round in many ways. Yeah, the classic, though, you're just there playing towards the back of the site, jump spotting. If you get the contact, you've got the Hei Chi, do a bit of damage. Maybe you soften them up enough that those five sevens can sing. Instead, none of that went their way. And you don't want to throw away all this armor. Free players with the armor investment. You've got good guns there as well. So just carry that into the next. So big, already finding themselves two rounds, putting together the puzzle here, starting with the edges, Anders. As you're meant to, right? Yeah, that is the, the strategy, I believe. You big on puzzles? I used to be for a period. But then I really just slipped away from it. I could just never quite line them up. I don't know what happened. I did a, a thousand piece Pokemon puzzle back home with the kids. Oh, yeah. But I, we started it together, and about 30 minutes in, they were bored and left. And then I just did all the rest of it. You're just there finishing the whole thing. Yeah, I can't leave something like that undone. You know, once you start it, you really got to really gotta follow through. But um, you got to commit. Yeah, but edge is the way to go. Not, not a lot of attempted mid control, speaking of which, we're keeping with the pu puzzle analogy. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the big haven't had to do too much yet. They did obviously split it in the middle, but in this previous round, they just kind of left it alone. Always curious to see how teams attack it on this map, because there are 
really two distinct styles. There are some teams that are really, it's really important for the T side to take mid control. They stage all of their strategies from that position. And there are teams that really don't worry about it nearly as much. Sometimes they'll show up, but it's not like a core piece of the puzzle for them. So yeah, curious to see how big they're going to end up playing this one. Bit of a push early on. Crimbo has been able to weave his way through underpass. Favin's there to support. So the mid crunch really is going to be quite heavy handed. You put Dupree on a pedestal early. He's got the Famous and he's looking for contact on short here. Taps him with the bomb as well. At least passes that back before he goes for the info play and doesn't just get the info, finds the frag. Trade game one out by Hyped as well. Yeah, that was... It looked like Dupree was ducking under as soon as Tamsin went out, so I'm kind of a little bit surprised that Tamsin actually got the kill, because that yeah. can be very tricky when you don't actually see anyone in the box there to begin with. Cyber on the scout, and he will take down Farman. That's a little bit worrisome. Hype is already tagged up, and he'll miss the second opportunity there, but maybe it's close. If he would have hit Hype there, that's an instant two versus three. Deagle in the back for Magus. He's pretty good with that weapon, but the bomb is going to be making his way over here, and Krimbo, what a great spot out. He should be able to, even at range, with the MAC-10 here, favored think and it's certainly that one no armor there so instant blow up for Saibu and I think Apex oh he might actually have the timing oh but he's a little bit slow on the trigger he looked like he was waiting to land the instant headshot and somehow Krimbo's able to pick it up that is uh that's a difficult round to lose I think Vitality they had a couple of chances here it's frustrating because suddenly it's racing through your mind as well, especially in those dying moments there where he goes down. Could have been a bit of a different story if he stays alive. More so for Zaiwu. It felt like he was sold down the river, right? You're thinking you can rotate back to B, back turned, confident that it's clear. Suddenly, just turns out there's been a man lurking in the bomb site the whole time. This is the one saving grace, though. At least nice little AK there to be scavenged. You can hold on to the Kalashnikov. Yeah, and you'll take that. That's a pretty powerful way to bring into the next one and... Yeah, some of their players are going to be a little bit low on money, so you, you know, might as well you get the extra grenades to play around with and all the rest of it. It's a, it's a bonus at least. But big are off to a good start. They're going to be celebrating the beginning of this one as they pick up a third round here. This is a little bit unfortunate, but I'm shocked that he picked up the second one there. That was uh, definitely not meant to be. See him here. Oh, just spotted it. Well done from Krimbo, honestly. Good reactions. He always seems like the movement in those sort of rounds is what wins him little plays as well. He's really good at kind of manipulating his hitbox. If he's ever in an awkward angle, I've always noticed that about him. He knows how to tuck himself down, make it really uncomfortable for you in the fights. It's definitely something to keep an eye on the longer this game develops, but at least for Vitality now, you've got the reinvestment. Zaiwu coming in with the AWP. M4s across the board, other than the scavenged rifle that Magis brought in from the prior round. And this could be a bit of a scrap. Want to set themselves up for the A play a little bit later on. They've got all the bells and whistles for it, and Dupree could be tested. Yeah, and he just has to stay away because his teammates are clearing out middle. They're having this very aggressive push to try and take top mid control. So if he fights it on his own, that's probably a mistake. He was nearly dead behind that one. They're trying to get through, but that's also a mistake. Tabson will take him right down, and they're in a lot of trouble here. They're going for a deep flank with Spinks going to be running through T-spawn, but unless they can hold the CT spawn position, the flank will be pretty much useless. Oh, wow. They might even call it off here. That's a difficult call to make. It's a four on five. You have the flank in. You have a lot of people already kind of in CT spawn, and you decide almost instantly to pull the plug on this round. Let's see how it plays out. I mean, the, the way to judge this is to say, what is Vitality's economy going to be like, you know, two or three rounds from now? That's when you'll know whether or not this was worth it, really. Grimbo is still attempting to make it costly as well. He had weaved his way in through underpass, but luckily for Spinks, he not only finds the frag in T-spawn, but can also shut down Krimbo. So the reinvestment has to come out there. Don't think that's going to bother them. Fat stacks across the board for Big. Their rap career is paying off with the savings they were able to amass. And talking of saves, yeah, that was a quick throw in of the tower, right? Immediately after losing those frags, like you were saying, you were kind of set up to build yourself back into the round. I was already in my mind thinking Spinks is about to go on there to be really the backbreaker. Yes. Just didn't happen. And it's, it's not the meta that we've been seeing throughout the RMR so far. It feels like almost all teams are ready to fight to the death for every single part of the map, no matter what. So yeah. it's been happening a lot. Curious to see Vitality pull in. Not necessarily old meta, but certainly this saving CT side weapons is... 
you know, something that we saw a lot more out of in the last major. So it doesn't mean it won't work. It's just it is risky if you end up losing everything in this round. Then it's you just kind of gave up the previous round, maybe for nothing. Instant smoke there to try and save himself a little bit of space. He got some teammates with him that are going to be able to help out. So I think it's just some good info right now for the big side of things. And hype might be put up in a position here to get an easy kill. Yeah. Magus walking right into that one. Four versus five to begin with, and they're not committed to anything. Luxury for Big at the moment. That's one of the nice things to see from Big as well. They're not really over committing into any of these rounds. They're being able to play split and pick, rely on players like Hype to get that first entry, and then decide after they've cut time if they want to work with it. But here, Spinks, he goes down, extinct, off of the contact there. So already two opening picks. This is looking uncomfortable. They're backing off, trying to poise themselves towards B. Ooh, this could get rough in the late round, actually, with the rotation coming in as well. Final 30 seconds, Anders, and they're actually going to be going for the raw B play. Yeah. Could be messy. Yeah, this is another great... This is a time it really is a great calculation for Vitality. You're basically saying if they come B, we could probably win the three on five over here. And if they don't, then we'll just save the rifles. But we'll see. Krimbo's made the jump down side. Where's the fact they can't not commit? Oh, and the spray down. Dupree with the double headshot. And the round is won in a three on five by Vitality. They made it easy at the end. And that is because of that dice roll. You just say, let's hope yeah. they go. They did, and it was an absolute shot down. So big, really well played up until that point in time, but they needed a little bit more time because if they had another 20 seconds, they could have sent Krimbo in to discover that there were people on the B bomb side like that, and maybe he just says, all right, it's fine, guys. Just you know, run under paths to the A bomb side instead. It's already Apex feeling that energy. God, I do wonder what it would be like nice. to live a life in the day of Apex and, like, feel that sort of emotion every damn day, man. I feel like I'd just be such a different human. It'd be good. Possibly possibly quite exhausting at the end of the day, too, but it's a real roller coaster ride as well when you see Apex because he's hyped when they're winning, but, you know, anything goes wrong. Even when they are winning, they could be up 10 rounds in a row, but if they lose even one, Apex is immediately looking very frustrated, very dejected. So, mm. I, yeah, real roller coaster of emotions. Wears his heart on his sleeve. That's why we all love him. But here, no love. It's all about who can punish the most. Minute and 20 on the clock into the sixth round. Fairly default from the setup. No real aggression too early from Big, like they've been trying into the prior rounds. They love really using Hypes as the first sort of 30-second playmaker to see if he can get those picks off the back of spawns. Here wasn't really a possibility for it. So he holds towards top mid, now groups up with a pack, and they've got the util for this as well. Yeah, it's a very classic way of thinking about the AWP as sort of the, an entry tool to try, especially on an open map like this. Could be a little bit tricky on some of the maps that have some smaller choke points, but on this one, you definitely can try and wheel that AWP in first. They're going to be going pretty hard at it here as well. Three of them coming up the ramp. Keto, that looked like almost run and gun. Sprays down Apex with a wall bang, and Ooh. they just keep going. All headshots all the way through, including the Galil. And Cyber and Dupree, they're not even going to take a step closer to the bomb side. Why would you at this point in time? Wow, that's, that's pretty devastating. It really does feel like if you flip the names, <laughs> you could be led to believe, right, that this is kind of vitality with the opening gambit, with the way that it's being played out. Boy, okay, so another save, just holding on to the orbs that Zywoo still has it in his possession, but big. They're starting to get that hot hand that I was talking about. If they warm up early, it feels like it follows them throughout the game. And here on Mirage, looking pretty damn good. Quality T side already, right? You've grabbed yourself five rounds. It's interesting about how many are on Blast TV. All CSGO majors for Dupree, about two thirds are saying yes. Count myself in that camp, I'm not gonna lie. I could see Dupree doing it. Oh yeah, I think so. I think even just for the storyline as well, of obviously having that little bit of time away, now coming back. This man's a father, Anders, he's gotta be there, right? He's the daddy of the scene. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, you can't be, can't, can't leave him out for the last one, can you? It feels wrong. <laughs> <laughs> laughing their way through the round. That's brilliant. It's so funny as well with Kido, how he was kind of just a weird stand-in at one point in this mm -hmm. team, and then just made his way in as a full-time member, and he, I think he's been playing progressively better and better for the last th two or three months. Pretty good. Yeah, I think it's also the amass of games that they're starting to play as well, and that's one of the factors that I think everyone kind of thought about 
but never really, you know, is fully committing to the idea that a lot of the teams we've seen that have just been grinding games consistently would come in so heavy-handed to the RMR, but it's been pack full of upsets. And Bigger, another team that I would now shift into that camp of just being able to really outmaneuver you. It feels like the strap book's got a lot more depth to it. Nice little run boost early on as well. Put Tabson behind a box at middle, so Dupree sees nothing through the one way. Yeah, and I think the something that's always been with the big camp is this heavy level of preparation, especially for high-level games. So I'm sure they have a really good understanding of how Vitality like to play, and I'm sure everyone feels quite locked into thinking about that. And as long as it's working, as long as the prep is paying off, you feel great about it. Obviously, the problem comes soon. You feel like, all right, plan A isn't working, but oh my god! That was Crimbo down from below, picking Dupree up as he jumped away. And you actually see Dupree got quite annoyed at that little little shot coming through. Four on five to begin with, still a minute on the clock here. And once again, they're not committed. They don't really have to do anything right now. They can wait it out. So Father Crimbo being the reverse Santa Claus there, stealing away the present. Still put big in a big position. 45 seconds left on the clock. Saiwu at the back of B, scoped in, ready to assassinate. Hits the first and has to get himself into a good angle to work with. But he's bought a ton of time. 35 on the clock. They're still playing behind the smoke and it looks iffy. They're waiting for the rotations for the rest of the squad. Molly's now down at the back thinking he was on the close. And this is going to be so rough. I mean, one more mistake here and the whole round goes down with it. So they bail out off of the contact, go through underpass. Tabson. He's got himself a powerful position to work with, but Spinks is still on the site. This doesn't get any easier. Oh, what a sick shot from Tabson and Spinks dropping as well. There's still a chance for Megas to win this round. A wallbang shot might do it. Oh. I think he would have won the round if he got that. A blind spree, and there would not have been enough time for anyone to pick up the bomb and plant it any longer. That is way closer than it seems. The kills are going in the favor of Big, but low time in that round, and they could have definitely lost it. He managed to escape Saibu, and that's probably good news. He seems to be pretty much fired up, but also potentially a little bit immobile in this bomb site. He's kind of just at the back of the B bomb site, waiting for them to show up, and that's something to be maybe concerned about. Good finish for Tabson, steals the AWP away, and this is actually a brilliant start for Big right now. I've got to say, this is super impressive. You're rolling with the momentum. And they're looking good, especially for the late round call to actually still make the round out of it in the fashion they did, where it seemed like you're just going to be funneled into the meat grinder. You know, B-Site becomes an abattoir. God, Majisks as well. Clearly showing the frustration on that one, and rightly so. Whereas differently for the camper big there, God B giving his input immediately, trying to keep themselves level-headed, even with the large lead you've amassed. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's obviously also the tricky part. It's one thing to win a string arounds like this, but to kind of keep the flow going and keep uh, Vitality guessing is definitely very tricky. They're playing it so late in these rounds. That does have me concerned. But so far, it's mostly looking pretty good. So I'm not going to be criticizing it too much. What a start for Big. I was not expecting it. Six to one in their favor. Just barely scraping together a buy here on Vitality. All of the money being used in this one. So on the other side, Big are super rich. Could be a much more plain strategy here. Looks like a default A execute. We all know and love. Majesk being the first point of contact with the desolate space. Can he create space for the team? That's the big old question. Is they're relying a lot on him here. In the meantime, it's just early information shown, but no cards truly played. You can still set yourselves up. You've got the utility that you want. Hyped paranoid about the potential for the flank as well. Yeah, that's obviously the downside of occupying such a small part of the map when you're on the T side is you you do get to wonder what are they doing on the part of the map we're not on? If anyone's sneaking up to take map control, we need to know about it. So they're going to take the bomb with them to go investigate, which kind of makes you think maybe they've just changed their minds entirely. Not sure what it was that did it. Mid control is still heavily in favor of Vitality, which should be an advantage to them. Should mean that they can rotate really quickly both to A and B at this point in time. We'll see what Big decide to try and do with that. Nice enough spray down on the Crimbo. The bomb's still making its way over here. And just going to be a, a little bit of an attempted entry. Three people coming into the B bomb site. Dupree in a prime position, but it's Tabson that tackles the first man. Hits the shot onto Apex and gets the bomb down. Good setup into the four versus four. 
And there is still one all the way back towards T-Spawn. That's Keo. He's got a bit of a fun run to make, a marathon, if you will, to arrive on the scene of the crime. Meanwhile, Dupree drops bombs on the Tabson. Spinks, he's slivering up in the rear, sees the head of Hyped and is able to hard commit to the frag. It just goes down to five and really the full front or assault doesn't work out. That's the double kill. And because of the timing, they could jump on this. They've got the read smoke out for Keo, but it would have to be insane. Bomb about to be defused. And that one slips through the fingertips. Yeah, a little bit of a shame, but I mean, the, the, the game plan was definitely there. I don't think they were expecting for that flank to come through from the CT side. They probably were assuming that because Kido was back there, he would have been able to intercept anyone that came through, but it did not work out that way. An important round for Vitality, no doubt about it. They need to start turning this into their favor. Yeah, there's a good grenade out there. Yeah, this, this move from Spinks here is huge difference maker. Okay, six to two. And for the money as well, they need to keep on winning. They've got to find a way to slow peak down. It's been way too much of a good start. And this time, again, another look for the big side. Very fast in the middle this time to try and take that control. Ooh. It's one of the things I was talking about as well with them being able to change the place, having quite a lot of depth in terms of the way they play this T side. At least here, though, Dupree had the read from the aggressive position on shorts. That's now the first frag back. Fathom struggling to find himself really in the forefront of this game at the minute. That's the bomb just lurking its way down through mid. Lots of utility hard committed to this as well. Still two players back towards T-spawn, one of them being Crimbo that could be caught here on the angle. Quick adjustment. Hell of a shot. And Spinks realizes he's got to back off. Could be baited into the Palace player, though. Yeah, he's thinking about it. Really wanted to go, I think, recommit and fight that one, but it is still a four on four. And at about 45 seconds. Oh, Keto, that is a beautiful headshot to find. Spinks goes down, and now this A bomb site's feeling very weak, but the bomb is on the other side. I think, understandably, Vitality has started to rotate this way. They're putting two at the A-bomb side. Almost Apex, you could tell, is being drawn this way. He wants to go to the A-bomb side, but second-guessing himself, and that might be the right call. They're going to be jumping the bomb back down. Big. I'm not sure if this is great late-round calling or if this is a little bit of indecision, but it could cost them everything. Oh, it's got to be picture-perfect, and Tabson takes the head off like a photographer with the first Zaiwu. He could be the difference maker here. Eight seconds on the clock. If he can deny the plant, he could save the whole situation. But they're just landing every bullet. Keto claps down on nation. Hell of a play coming in there. And already a monstrous half with the amount of rounds that they've racked up. Yeah, this is super impressive. And honestly, the calling does look really good. They had everything covered they needed to, right? They don't need to fight the CT spawn when they're coming up the connector like that. As long as they plant safely towards the middle, which they control. If anyone tries to run, there's a player in Keto who's up in the palace who can take a deep swing. So they have pretty much everything planned out right now. And the fact that they're playing it late into these rounds, it feels like Big just came prepared to play that kind of Counter-Strike. And that's it's working for them. So I don't really have anything to, to say about that. You could tell how awkward it is for Vitality at the end because they're not really sure where to go. They feel like it probably is A because they already have two entries on the A bomb site. But then they start to doubt themselves and they have to split up their forces and they only have three of them. They're very hard right now for Vitality to get information about what's happening in the last 30 seconds of these rounds. It's really impressive just how dynamic it's been. For Vitality, what really is the remedy? I suppose more so than anything, it's just about the individuals. Spink seven for seven at the minute. Some of the other key players haven't really ever been in a position where they can actually take the firefights they want. Zywoo's felt like he's been so isolated or stationed at the wrong site when the push has come in. Here, hyped. Tried to commit to the frag with the AWP. Wanted to open things up on the A site, but Magisk finds the timing, picks up the pieces, and if they could recover that, could be a hell of a bolster to the Arsenal. Yeah, they don't know it yet, but they definitely can. Saibu could take a step forward and pick up that AWP. He hasn't really done it yet. Probably afraid that someone is waiting for him on the other side. Bomb is still back in T-spawn right now. So big lurking for another good opening if they can get one. Four and five here to begin with. And the spray for Megas not really working out this time. Farman will take him down. Instead, he survive on three health. So it was really, really close. 
But that's the opening that Big need to get back into. That's going to disjoint that defense a little bit. You can see they're moving away from the middle and gravitating towards the A side of the map. But the bomb, once again, is making its way to the other side. Big just have a very good feel for what's happening here. Tabson, though, needed eyes in the back of his head to be aware of that one. So Apex instead wins out with the SMG. Krimbo clacks back. Blows the brain straight off of Dupree and leaves us in a free versus free then. So Apex making his move through the underpass, the one that's armed with the Kalashnikov. Zaiwu finally takes space in Palace as well to grab the orb. He can run off, save that. Spinx also finding the M4. That's additional benefit for Apex. No idea that Favon is on top of the countertop. That is not food safe. And as there is going to be mud all over the counter. That's true. Um, I don't know if I'd be making any food in that kitchen. It, it's, it looks a bit rough. It's it very, does. Yeah, very grimy kitchen. Pots up there, never been cleaned ever before. It's just, it's not an easy time. So, um, you know, we'll take the kill, make make dinner some other time. Wow. I don't, I'm not sure what Apex wanted to accomplish there. No, I mean, I suppose at that point, right, you've got the AK, especially with the other two players being able to save in the fashion they did. Could have just also backed off, gone for the game plan. Instead, seeing if he could make it a bit costly, but just wasn't ready for the, uh, for the left-hand angle, the left-hand turn. He's been driving on the non-European roads. True. Very confusing every time. I th every time I end up in a country where that's the case, I'm always afraid that I'm just going to walk straight into traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Take the wrong turn immediately. I did that once when we were driving to LAN, and our in-game leader drove onto the motorway the wrong way, and we all immediately realized what had happened, and luckily slammed the brakes on in time to reverse. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good time. Not a good time. Wow. Um, I think that was the third time I've been used by Vitality. It's really, we're still in the first half. Yeah. We're still 10 rounds deep, and they are burning through those uh, those breaks really quickly. That's also a bit of a worrying sign. You look at the scoreboard here, and it's Apex on one, it's Makis on two kills, Sai one four. Again, he's had the AWP a couple of rounds, but he's been somewhat passive with it. So whenever they show up, he gets a couple of kills, but this time they're gonna try and see if they can change the speed of the round again. A lot of different variation here for Big. Apex will get a second kill finally. He's taken down. Oh no, that was Dupree on the other side. Apex is still here. He could make this a bit of a round now. Good job and smoking it off to wait for the reinforcements. Talk of smoke plays. Look at Tabson walking in to slay. No protection there for Sphinx. Apex at the back of the bomb site. He was trying to find himself in a position to punish, but Hyped, again, flicks to the head and blows him away. So it's down to the battle of the Orping Superstars now. Playing around the pillar also gets contact and information there, but Zaiwu swings from it. Molotov dashed out. He's got a second one in the pocket. He can burn him off the bomb and waste enough time, even diving out through the window. Magis jumps on the back. Oh, Zaiwu! All right, scope attached for max precision, and he blows him to bits. Business now for Vitality, keeping them in that one. First of all, what a sick move from Tamsin to even get out and actually pick that way to, to flank, but ultimately ran into the AWP. And if Simon misses that shot, they just lose the round, presumably. Yeah. So kind of tricky. Also, the Molotov, it bounced off the wall. Tamsin is a great idea, but it kind of bounced the wrong way. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Nice! They win the round, but really only barely. That's not a confidence-building round if you're on the Vitality side. I mean, you're probably happy to take it. They've picked up another AWP, so double opening in this one. They need to win every single round. This has to be an 8-7 half right now for the Vitality side. And it's at least a good start. Blood painted on the back wall there in the middle. Opening kill goes the way of Saiwu. So they poise themselves early towards B. One of the things I have seen them do quite commonly as well is use hype again just to try and find that first pick, right? You go for the jump spot. If he hits the shot, you play contact off the back of it. If you don't, you bail out of the round. So they really use him kind of as a gauging tool to see if he can find the early space for them. Always good for the late round, though. This guy can be quite crisp, and he's going to be sneaking his way up towards Connector. Could be some prime opposition for him here. I really like the initiative the Hype will take in some of these rounds, although flashed in, it's so oh. efficient! Spinx! Just checkmarking everyone. There's one, two, three. I'm just going for the list easily. And Farman is alone. That looked just mechanically so crisp. And you like to see that. The flash setup as well to make that extra easy. What a delightful little triple for him. 
And that's now we're talking about building a little bit of confidence. This should be the kind of thing where Vitality can re just remind themselves of what they're here to do. Look down at the jersey. Remember where they are. Yeah. That's important, right? This is a, these, these teams are 2-1 right now. So if you win here, you qualify. Huge weight off your back if you're Vitality. On the other side of things, though, if you don't, you go into that 2-2 group. And Lord only knows what's going to happen down there. That'll be wild. Nobody wants to experience that. No, the murky waters of the way some of those games in the bracket are going to go, especially with some of the results we'll get towards the end of today. And you start thinking about the last chance qualifier. There is so much that could get awkward. So you want to win it when it's on your terms. And that's exactly what this is. It's a fresh best of three. Even with Big being in the lead, you can always come back from that. And it seems like Vitality now are starting to find themselves more in that mindset, right? Zaiwu playing on angles that favor him a little bit more, not just tucked back at B, feeling like he's kind of on an island for the late round. And Spinks, when he comes alive and as the whole damn dynamic changes yeah they need something like that again it's been kind of quiet even on the fragging front for the vitality side so something to pick it up something to change how they feel and that just very well might be it flash assist from apex on every single one of those kills so really really good flash to be throwing into the middle Classic jump down here for Tabson. Through the smoke, flashed in. They're going to keep on going. This is all about speed, but Cyrus on the other side. And every time you run into this player, you just know it's going to be a bad time. He's hunting for more. He can sniff them. He knows they're close by. Oh, it won't matter though. His Tabson surprises. His pathing was great. His fragging's been amazing. And now again, it's a round that seems to be slipping back towards big as Tabson just keeps delivering. Mind the gap. As he's the one that's creating space, Dupree forced to save. It's so cool, isn't it? Because Tabson sacrificed himself as a potential, you know, superstar opera to try and save German Counter-Strike. But every once in a while, you know, you're reminded, you get that glimmer of, wait a minute, this is what Tabson's all about. What a great gift to have at a time like this. The kill for the smoke is just, you know, again, the experience chiming through, but he is so crisp when he's got that uh, that mechanical aim up and running. A real joy to be watching. 11 kills on him after this one. And it comes at a perfect time as well, because Vitality were starting to get a bit of momentum, starting to gather themselves. They'll have the money still in the next round, but just they were starting to feel a little bit better, you could tell. And now they're getting run down. Tabs to find the last one, a quad kill on him in this one. I think it stings that little bit more because it is the manner in which Tabson basically just goes absolutely off to win that round, right? There's probably a sigh of relief in the team speak when Zywu gets the opening pick towards Connector. You're thinking, okay, yeah. build off the back of this, should be able to play the trade now, it's in our hands. And I will say, throughout the RMR, actually, Tabson really has been looking mechanically super good, which has yes. been nice to see. Because, of course, if you've got all five fingers on one hand working together in tandem, it's a way a lot better. You can hold things, you can grip stuff. It is designed that way, many could say. Yeah. I suppose if you take the thumb off, everything would just fall straight off. Definitely not a, not a favorable position, I'm not going to lie. Could be an advantage in other situations, Jackie, but... Um, Spinks, he's straight down. It's Tabson to find another opening through the smoke. Cyrus, though, quick on the return. And it is a four on four. Still keeping a lot of people here. It's Keto. Kind of almost three people near the A bomb site, while the rest of them are making a rotation towards Apex, who's not had the best game yet, but he'll be put to the test right here. Ooh. Goes for the swing off the back of the audio cue, and he does tackle against Crimbo. Big tag as well onto Hype that could apply a bit of pressure to the man, but Bavin, he wants to stand tall. Gets into the back, lines that one up, knows Apex has no vision, hits the head, leaves him lifeless, and it drops us down into a free versus free. Awkward encounter on the A site with Keto on the rotates. Dupree spots that one out, and they know there's just two now. Yeah, they definitely do, but they don't have any of the important grenades. They need a smoke right now. They have kits, but just to block off that AWP, that's going to be the tricky part. What a lineup here for Hype. Missing the first one and actually revealing his position. Let's see. Maybe they could find him with a nade again. Dupree able to get that one. And Farman is practically dead. Deep grenade on top of it. They don't have the smoke to get rid. Time is running low, but I think they should have enough time. He needs to die right here. And they are instantly on the defuse. Really close call here at the end, but it will be Vitality to pick up a fifth round. It's Vitality scraping through that one by the skin of their teeth. 
And it's not how you would really expect this game to go on paper. The 9-5 to five score line, the way these rounds are being won, the manner in which it is, you're thinking that would be attributed a lot more towards big. But right now, they're playing some quality counter. The individuals are looking good. And even in situations like this, they're keeping it close for Favon off the back of the frag he had there from Apex. I was really thinking he had secured the deal. But they found the flanker on the A site, and it all started to unravel. Now, back towards A on the early default. Oh, Zai Wu. Man's getting his confidence back, and as he controls the palace. And just a bit of aggression. I really like it. I like to see him be just a tiny bit more active because he's certainly got the skill to back it up. They're on the ramp, and actually, they're getting flanked already. Dupree's just going to keep on going. Sai Wu into getting a run. This is dangerous, but... He's up for the task. Headshot to take down Farvin. It's a three versus five. And actually, Dupree's going to give up on the flank. He's saying, you know what? I'm just going to come back to the palace. No real flick coming out there. I think he was just way too flashed. It's going to be Tabson going down, leaving Crimbo and Hyped. And already Hyped has got a little bit of an inkling that something is going on in that palace. No bomb plant because that bomb is in CT spawn. Tabson must have brought it over. It trickled all the way down the stairs. Grimbo is going to be going down. Not quite ready for it. And now hyped. There really are no wrong choices here. Whatever you do, you're probably going to be in a lot of trouble. So might as well just take the fight and see if you can come out on top somehow. Not going to happen. Megas will take him down. Nine to six at the end of the half in favor of Big. What a great start for the German side. We'll see if they can continue after this.
When I throw the clip in the AK, I slay from far away. Like the lyrical Christopher Wallace once said, that's what B.I.G. have been doing in the server tonight, Anders. Tabson, 3-0 in opening duels, putting rounds in his pocket just off the back of his own individual. Yeah, notorious right now, aren't they? It's wonderful to see. And uh, with this kind of a beginning, I mean, they could claim Mirage for themselves pretty fast. If they win the pistol round in the second half here, they are almost already there. Vitality look a bit flat. They did start to come alive at the end of it, which is good news, I guess, for Vitality fans. But man, this second half needs to be something else. It's got to be clean. It's got to be clinical. And this could get a little bit disgusting early on. I see Hyped has pulled out the hemoglobin doolies. Madman wants to spill a pint of blood, and already it starts off. Apex slain, and the bomb quickly scurrying towards the B site. Dupree backing off to assist as Zywu says goodnight to Fathom. Yeah, this is a bit interesting. It's going to be a full-on retake at this point, the way that it's shaping up. Even though the bomb is a little bit late to be planted, they're not quite sure about how much control they really have. And even before it's down, they're already attacking into it. Two versus four, and Cyber's got no way to go. He has to fight his way out, and he will. Two big headshots. Dupree now up in the palace or up in the hallway just waiting for it. They do not have a kit currently picked up, so it's going to be a real long time where Dupree can jiggle this out. And being know it as well. They really want to try and see if they can find him. Flashbang's not going to help out. They're both right there, and they're coming for him, trying to hunt him down. Hyped with a good shot right there. It's a real close one, but um, Big are going to have enough time for the defuse. They were already there when the bomb was planted, so 10 to 6 going to be the scoreline. And from what was the game, where in the first few rounds it felt like Zaiwu wasn't really allowed to play his style of CS. He's come alive, especially here in the pistol round, the P250 Punisher. Three frags he finds there make the world of difference, but in the dying moment, Big still pull it out. Those doolies sing on strong. It was disgusting, man. The second shot onto Krimbo, you're even thinking then he goes on to kill Tabson just because of how clean it looked. I mean, it would probably, if Tamsin isn't just as clean on the other side, that's exactly what will happen. He would have just continued to slay all of them. 10-6, four-round lead, but because of the bomb plant, they're going to be picking up rifles right away. They're not going to be delaying this at all. Flash over the top, which probably going to be hurt a little bit, some of the steps down there. No one from Vitality really wants to go and check it out. In fact, they're quite far back on the map in general. Famuses and MP9s. Always feels like a bad dream. You're going to wake up in cold sweats, look down and go, oh, it was an M4, not a Famus. I feel way better. But here, it is a reality, Anders. Those really are the weapons you've got to contend with into this round as the push is coming towards you on the B site. In the back line, Favon takes first contact, dashes out the Molotov, and here comes the rest of the squad. They're running straight in, but I love this angle from Grimbo up on top. They can't see you over the edge of the smoke. He strikes on the Sphinx. Dupree with the Galil, good for one, but it's not really enough until Zaiwu pulls up to the party. Hard commits on the bomb plant, though, and Grimbo got a gap on the edge. He can strike against him, leaving it all up to Apex to prove that he's the best. Yeah, he's got a huge chance against the first one here. If he can pick it up, then... Oh, he's getting shot at the back of range, and the oh. panic, it's all-consuming. Kido will take him down in a classic Apex emote there at the end. Oh, man, he had no idea where they were, and the fact that... The fact that Krimbo was inside of the smoke at the end, they just, they just never realized. They probably thought they already killed him, because he was on the boost earlier. My God, that is such a close round. Really down to the wire here. And some of these 1VXs... And it's that raw passion as well that's so exciting. The it fact is. we've got the contrast, right, of Tabson kind of really going in. Apex as well with the emotes. And you can see him kind of saying to him, he's pointing to his head saying, guys, we need to think. Oh, that's super rough, isn't it? But because it ends in a one-on-one -on -one with the bomb plant, it makes a lot of sense to force up into this round. You know the CT side economy is not going to be that great. So you might as well just keep the pressure on. 11 to 6. This is actually still a super winnable map for Vitality. So I wouldn't be too concerned. As long as they can keep the economy low on big, there's always a way back. Wow, no fear at all from Apex. Running right through the map. 10. They should be able to get Krimbo here. That's fine. Valuable trade. In fact, they're going to keep going. This is a little bit wild. Farvin, quick headshot to slow things down. Sphinx is in trouble as well, and they're just getting chewed up. Farvin with excellent defense. 
Three kills, and it's getting Tamsin hyped up now. Tamsin yelling. You know something's going right for big, and the scoreline supports that fact. But yeah, surprising as well. The pace that Vitality took into that when the Molly was supposed to split them and they had actually got through it. I was thinking maybe they do just have a tempo off of this, right? You get a couple of frags, but not going to happen. Big right now, very heavy with the hand. Deny any sort of shenanigans. And they move six rounds away. 12 to 6 being the scoreline. It's just the deco for Vitality. Going to be some banging headshots to make this round work. They're in the middle fighting, so they're going to have an opportunity. Big have sort of said, okay, we'll make it fair. At least we'll come to Ooh. you. Spinks will find one more. They keep going. I don't know why. This whole army of deagles up at top mid just stopped fighting them. Tabson goes down next, and it's a four versus two, but still winnable here given the armor situation. No head armor, so the MP9 can do quite a bit. Crimbo's up close, and he will explode Apex on that one. They should still be in a decent position, even if it's a scary start. Is there any more pistol punishment? Well, finally, will they be on the receiving end of what they've done here into the 19th? They're grouping up for the walk in towards B, but this is Crimbo's land. He has the lease for this apartment and you are not allowed in. Turns the key for the first frag onto Zaiwu. Backs off to play the numbers game as well. You love to see this. Yeah, very smart. A little bit of a jump. He actually took a lot of damage. Just to don't do it again. They're waiting for you right up there. 40 seconds, and he's right underneath, catching them as they fall into his arms. Dupree will get that one on Crimbo, and it is a one versus one. He's going to fake it out, hoping that there's some panic on the other side. Keto's coming in for it. And again, in the armor so far, Keto has been a really strong player. Dupree might go to the A-bomb side. You can make that call right now. If you wanted to, you could risk it. That's the time for it. Cut sound for a second, but as he started to sprint his way over, Keto, he has an idea of what's going on here. Would need to be the 4K for Dupree to save the day. 10 seconds on the clock, crosses. Deagle was pulled out, but the connector will be held. And big, they grabbed that round. It was just Eagles, but it was damn tight. Yeah, so I think at a different point of the game, Maybe I try to argue, okay, well, they still did a lot of damage, but the problem is now we're getting so close to the finishing line here for Big, and it doesn't really feel like it has quite the same impact. It is still obviously cool to get four kills in a round like this one, but it's 13 to six. You need to do more than just do some economic damage. We need to see reliable structure here for Vitality to start to win rounds in the second half. Otherwise, all of this is just academic or economic at the moment, I suppose. Dupree is going to be getting the kill onto Tabson at the start of the round. It's a pretty good start, but he burns alive. Crimbo. There were a lot of people there. I don't know why Dupree was stuck back there. Smokes were in position as well, but I guess at that point they would rather save the smoke. He didn't really have an exit path, so he goes down to the Molotov. So it is a one for one, even with it basically being the Martyrdom play from the Molly. So Dupree's in the Burns Ward, and Big, they're burning bright into the game so far. Down to about a minute and ten as well, reshuffling themselves, leaving Hyped as the sole defender of the B site with the Orb. Hyped going to be walking up. Not going to be spotted immediately. Sphinx is behind the corner, but this is very scary if you're an AWP player. You miss the flick to the left-hand side here and you don't get to escape at all. Let's see if they're going to be able to time this peek down. Oh, he is just a shoulder peeking and Sphinx drops immediately. Hype, there was plenty of time for him to get that done. Farman's going to sneak in a kill on Apex. Now they're running at him, but he doesn't even need to fight this. He's got backup coming. Two players on the A-bomb side are getting a little bit closer and Hype is absolutely star performance on this one. Defending the B-bomb side, triple on him, up to 11 and bringing big up to 14. God damn, man. Inside and outside of the server, he is looking like he's feeling himself today. That's one of the nice things about Hyped as well, actually. It kind of looks like he's really gelled into this squad. Okay, that's the explanation for the Molotov then. Yeah, going back to this man on your screens. It's just how fast he is, how aggressive he is, but he knows when he's overcommitting. He knows when to back off. It seems like he's already had that instilled into him, but it doesn't feel like sometimes when you have that younger, hot Orpa, you kind of get a bit broken by your in-game leader. Here, he's really been built up. Yeah, and to be honest, I mean, one of the questions about Hype is also how is he going to play when the stakes are higher against better opposition? Mm. And there was nobody had the, really the answer to that, but I mean, this is pretty impressive. He's going to find the kill on Dupree. Keto flashed for a minute, but it's going to duck back down to minimize his model. Sai was getting a kill, but not really much more than that at the moment. Magus got his own, smoked off away from the party, and all of his teammates are dead.
never the position you want to be in. You're waiting for everyone to arrive, you're in the palace, you've got the snacks out, the drinks are there, and then you realize the whole team's dead and it's just you in a bad dream. And none of these pillows will make it any more comfortable to sit on. They're those little round pillows, I don't even know what they're for. Are they just for decoration? What I think they... that is what they're for, right? Like they're fro pillows, but I've never understood them because they're really uncomfortable and they, they kind of they look for, awful. Yeah. They're just, it's just, okay, it's just purely aesthetics. Wow. What, uh, what are the most dangerous canoes, Jackie? Do you know? The most dangerous canoe? Yeah. No, I don't. Vol canoes. <laughs> okay, this is good. I'm glad we're already we're on that same vibe, Anders. This is nice to run it back. Let's see though if Big can run it back for another round, or if Vitality are going to be able to stand tall here. Big man, six foot tall, out at middle. That's Dupree. Goes down like a ton of bricks as Tabson will strike against him. Oh, Majisk as well. He's eating nades, Anders. It's like Pac-Man, but you do not want to eat those. That's also fire. Get away from that. Oh, yeah, man, <laughs> is just catching all the elements over here. It's pretty rough. Four versus three, but only really barely. There's some, some life, you know, here in Sphinx. 13 kills, Simon 17. They got a couple of players up there. Actually, Dupree being one of them as well, but it's just that everyone on big is playing such a great game right now that there's not a lot of confidence left. You need nine in a row here on Vitality. I don't even think if they believe that at the moment, that's going to happen. And Krimbo started to move forward. Timing is everything. And he's just going to walk past this apex slipped away. This could be pretty huge. If he can get the flank in in time. On the other side, I think Hype is playing on his own at this A-bomb site. So that's an almost unwinnable position. But he has been hitting the flick, so I don't want to count him out yet. Oh, the timing on this as well. Zai Wu, just as he repositions with his attention on middle. Krimbo's popped out of the apps. Hits that one. Majisk with the trade back on the Galil as well. Takes down the aggressive AWP of Hypes and the bomb will be planted. And this doesn't end here. Spinks, good for free in the round. Pushes out and fully finishes things off. Krimbo forced into the save. Vitality move on to seven. And this is where, the, you know, the combined experience on this Vitality team is really high up there. And you, this is where you, if they are going to make the comeback happen, I mean, that, that's where the experience starts to really matter. That's where you start to really feel like, all right, we know we can technically, can be done mathematically. So just one round at a time and lock in that focus. It's been really hard to come by. You could see they've been frustrated. They've lost a couple of rounds. They probably didn't need to. And Big have had none of that issue so far. Spinks, really the one that saved them in this one, opening up on Farvin here, and I think he's going to get a couple of more kills before the end of it. So super important stuff. I think if not for Spinks, again, the defense probably would have been fine here for Big. Wow, what a position to be in. Not what I was expecting when we sat down to cast the game. Matt was picked by uh, by Big, so I suppose that's something to maybe think about. Um, obviously, second map is going to be on to Nuke, so we'll see what happens if we get there. I think actually, with how this is going then, let's just say for now, sure, Big do go on to win this one. The rest of Vita gets a little bit more spicy for me. I think Nuke into Overpass. Sure. Like, this could be kind of awkward to call the longer it goes on. But we'll stick with the present for now. We'll stay with where we are, right? Big, 15 rounds on the board. Vitality trailing behind with seven, but they've always got that experience. One of the things about Vitality as well, game ain't over till you close it. And that can sure. be the hardest bit. Yeah, you've got to. And you should do that really fast before your own players start to feel nervous. Probably not going to be until we get to, like, a 15-12 type scoreline that big starts as the reality sets in what could happen. Yeah. Overpass is the third map, though. You're going to be feeling pretty good about that for Big's point of view. I don't think they're going to be too sad about that being the third one. So let's just find out. Saibu is there, and he's going to find more kills. It feels like that's just how it is. Every time you come and try and battle him, probably will end up that way. Four on five to start with. Curious. Big just need one round. I wouldn't be surprised if we try and see a couple of more risky rounds coming out from them because all it takes, double push to the A ramp, even a three-man push to top mid, whatever it takes, because if you win even one of those risks, that's it. The map is done and you can rest easy. What do you think, Jackie? You give, give us a, a prediction here. Vitality comeback going to happen? I'd say 16-10 big based off what I've seen here. That would be my, okay. my safe hand if I went for it. So they... They, they walk it back and everyone's real happy and it's all good. Yeah. I'm calling it 100% comeback for Vitality. Oh, yeah? All right. This is good. Straight into overtime.
There you go. Now there's a bit of pressure on the line. We're both going to be like really invested to see if we get the right prediction. It's more fun that way, you know? I'm seeing Spinks really come alive, you know? That makes me happy. He seems to be taking some initiative. Although a round like this is kind of hard to judge anything off of because they do get the opening kind of for free, right? Not that I'm blaming you big, but it's just a lot easier to play a 4 on 5 when you kind of get the first AWP kill like that. Ooh, you talk about AWP kills as well. The AWPer has been slain here. Hyped really wanted to hold on to that one. Instead, now he's been thrown to the wayside and it's just Fathom that will get through for the save. One gun, not as effective with the low econ that they've got on the big side. And for Vitality as well, the main thing that I'm thinking is all of the pieces are now starting to wake up. Like Magisk went from kind of never really having his name set, and now he's starting to get a bit of a groove on, right? Eight frags to his name, had a bit of impact here, and he was a key player for this team, I think, throughout the RMR so yes. far. It's looked like he's had some big impact, so if he's awake and everyone's here for Vitality, then school could be in session, Anders. Yeah, he is an incredible momentum player as well. He's, you know, you've seen the frustration in some of the rounds that he lost there, but... Man, when he's up and running, he's just an unstoppable force. And the Eagle have to, they have to dig really deep to try and bring down some of these players. That's also why, from Big's point of view, like that, that 16 10 scoreline, that's a really comfortable way to close it before you get into that thing. I don't think it's there yet. I don't think they yeah. really are worried at the moment. They're out of money, so that's a bit of concern. But I think overall, they're probably quiet in the zone. I don't think Tapson's freaking out. They're just going to be saying, don't worry about it, guys. We know what the plan is here. We're going to get one of these rounds, and then we're off. But eventually, that fear can start to set in. And I mean, some teams just do not handle that well. No, you notice with a lot of squads as well, especially in these kind of matchups, the longer they go on, the more experienced, the more favorite side is always the one that seems to be able to pull it out, sort of string those rounds together, feel like they're the ones in control of the pace. Whereas you, staring one round down, can't quite seem to get it. The little mistakes creep in, the seed of doubt in the back of your mind as well. So yeah, the longer this goes on, the worse it will be for the big mental game. But right now we've actually got full bite to work with. So the Ort back out on Hyped. I like the fact he's been roaming a lot as well. He's trying to keep you guessing with how he's going to approach these rounds something that we saw from him hanging out at the at the showdown was the fact that even when he was having a tough game he would continue to try and find openings which is really admirable because it can be very easy as an orc player to give up on your aggressive orc play and just kind of like disappear in the match and you don't do anything maybe you don't die nearly as much but you also don't have any impact on any rounds and i felt like hyped kept trying to find openings which the only thing you don't know at that point in time is whether or not it'll work against tier one opposition when the stakes are really high, because that that can be punished really badly. I mean, some orpers like the Sai who like the Monesty could get away with it, but not everyone can be that kind of player. And I would say openly, we just don't know about hyped yet. But I appreciate the fact that he's trying a lot and and going for it. And this could be one of the real you know asset tests for him: is can he actually do it? If you can do it right here, right now would mean a whole lot in terms of the RMR, but it's the Org from Keto that is getting loud. The Spartans battling back there as the Orga wins out on the encounter, and we fall into a two versus three. Bomb planted, Apex up towards Palace. Zaiwu backs off on the ramp. They do not have a defuse kit, which is kind of... Uh, There's a long rotation for having a 10-second defuse on the, on the, on the hands right now. Saiwu's got a great read. Going to be taking down Tabsons right back into a 2-1-2. Two -two, and they're going to be backing on out. I can't believe it. The first thing I can't believe is the Orc. It was such a scrappy spray at the start of it. It looked like if you miss that many bullets on them coming out of the palace, you're going to get peaked and dead instantly. But he actually got the double kill regardless. So a strange round, all things considered. Now, here's the scary bit. That 15-10 scoreline, I said, it's here. It's arrived. So Zai Wu and the boys pulling into a power position. Five rounds away from potentially forcing us to an overtime. And here is Keto's org. Man that's slayed him down towards the site. I think in their minds again as well, that's a round where suddenly you're thinking, right, we've actually got a big advantage to work with for the first time again. Feels like we've been losing a lot of the opening duels. Here we can build off this and we got a save. Yeah, a little bit frustrating, although... Again, this is where Hyped as a player becomes a bit interesting because I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to try and, and make that AWP as big as he can in the in the round just to just to try and win it right now. Again, he seems like that kind of player. And I think that's a luxury to have at a stage like this. It's going to get everyone real fired up. You can see him in the middle fighting. He's not afraid of anybody here, and he does miss the opportunity. Run boosted into the middle of Saibu on the other side, but that could have been a huge kill to pick up to start with. Zaiwu is not ready for that. 
hyped with the movement early on. He was put in a position to go for that frag. Doesn't quite work out, barely splits the needle. Luckily, Krimbo on his aggression works well. Takes down Sphinx. Apex, Ooh, made a lot of noise, can't quite make the play, and Tapson might actually want to punish off the back of this. Head has been seen, goes back in for seconds, Anders, and he'll take that one. Oh dear, Jackie, you might be right on this one. Five versus three, with not a lot to work with, a sick flash with the smoke that was just fading up with the B hallways, and then a dink in the middle and a follow-up. And now things are looking pretty grim for Vitality. Three versus five, even with the lesser weapons on the big side, it doesn't really matter. They can kind of see what's coming. They've got a good rotation over on this side. Three-man setup, but they're pushed out of B, so it means they're going to be lurking through the middle pretty soon. Hyped, just giving up on the angle. If he'd stayed, he probably would have had a kill on the pre by now. 30 seconds left, and this has started to look really grim for the Vitality side. Good little flick there. Magus is going down, and Saiwo, he needs it, but there's no reason for Hype to fight him. Why would he? There's only 20 seconds left. It's on Vitality to get onto the bomb side, and Kido says absolutely not. Saiwo's on his own, fighting them left, right, and center. It's 16 to 10, as Big will pick up the opening map here and bring down Vitality.